thinking about a kayak trip, wondering if a folding kayak will meet your needs or can do it, and how good a boat it is, and is it possible to camp at one of these things? This is a review of the Oru Coast Kayak. It's a 16-foot kayak. A lot of people have questions about the reliability and how good it is. There's a discount coupon in the bottom. You get 10% off if you use that discount coupon on a purchase over $1,000. Now, I bought this boat, and this review is mine. I'm not pulling any punches. So I had it out, you know, I slept out here last night. I'm gonna do another day, my second day on the water today. Now, I've had this kayak out a lot. <laughs> I've had it all over the place. I've had it in the ocean, lakes, rivers. If you're used to a sea kayak or something, or a touring kayak, you know, everything, uh, they don't unbutton the way this does. They don't open up. So everything goes in the front or the back. You gotta pile it in there, and if you want something, you gotta go and dig for it. Uh, here, a similar situation. I kind of overpacked this boat. I brought too much stuff. But uh, when you want something, you gotta open it up and get inside and get what you want. When you get in your kayak, safety first. You want nothing in the cockpit that you can get tangled on. If the boat flips over, you want to be able to come out. Uh, so no rope, no webbing, no nothing in the, uh, in the cockpit. Just you and minimal gear that's not going to keep you trapped in there. Uh, that could be a uh, life or death decision. So use your head when you pack a kayak. Everything on this boat goes behind the bulkheads or in front of the bulkheads. And I do keep a few things in here. I keep some water, a selfie stick, and uh, a couple other things. And I have a deck bag too. You're gonna wanna leave yourself a lot of extra time. Probably took me an hour to pack up the kayak. Uh, I don't think that's unusual for this kind of a trip, but that, that was just packing the kayak, making it all fit. Uh, next time again, I would take less stuff and probably pack it easier. Uh, wind has died. Well, at least I'm sheltered from the wind. Maybe that's a better thing. I'm drifting at a decent pace now. All I have to do is keep the boat straight and it's, uh, Pretty pleasant, the back of the boat. Got a foam pad bungeed on there, paddle float. Bilge, from, bilge pump on the front in case I swamp and I want to pump it out. This is a uh, L.L. Bean uh, fanny pack, waist pack. I just hooked it on as a deck bag and I have a camera, some other stuff in there. Half spray skirt just for sun. Uh, I have hit some minor rapids here. Uh, nothing, you know, not much. I'll try and get some on film here. Again, a folding kayak. You only have one because you, uh, you can't have another kind of kayak. And I've had several folding kayaks. I've had a skin and frame. I've had uh, inflatable. And this is the first corrugated plastic one I've had. It's pretty good. It's very seaworthy, that's for sure. Uh, it's a touring kayak. There's no flotation in it. Of course, I have gear in here, and they're dry bags, so uh, that would help it float if it goes over. Um, yeah, if you have some other choice and you can store a kayak, well, then you get a rigid kayak. And I've had plastic kayaks, fiberglass, skin and frame, inflatable, and then this one. I kind of consider this like an exoskeleton kayak. And, uh, store it pretty easily. You know, if you live in Manhattan and you want to get out of Hudson River and paddle around Manhattan, you live in an apartment, you have not much choice in something like this. You can take this on an elevator or a bus. Here's the backrest. It has a uh, hard plastic back and there is a strap here which attaches over here and it provides support for the backrest. It's on each side. You just unclip it to take it out. And then uh, for the seat pad, this is the standard Oru seat pad. It's pretty comfortable, hard foam. Uh, and then below that is I have a wedge which Oru sells. The wedge is a second layer of padding and it angles, the, uh, it angles higher in the front, lower in the back. And that sort of gets your, your thighs up a little bit higher and it uh, helps prevent leg numbness if you're the kind of person that gets that. Uh, I think it's a great addition. Uh, if you're gonna paddle for long periods, just out for a little day cruise, no big problem, but I'll be paddling all day today. And yesterday I paddled for I think six hours or so, probably covered about 15 miles. These are Thunder River, Thunderwear, Thunderwear. And uh, they're gloves meant for paddling. I bought them a while ago. They have a reinforced thumb webbing. And uh, 
if you're out here paddling a lot, but, uh, you know, if you don't have calluses, they're pretty good to have. Um, definitely save your hands. I wouldn't want to do this without them. So one more time, arms straight out the box, turn the torso. Doesn't feel too natural right now. So I do pull my arms in a little bit as I finish the stroke. Now that I'm not saying this is good technique, but you do want to engage your uh, torso because it, uh, it helps you get a lot more power. That's really where a lot of your power comes from and it saves your arms a lot more. Uh, this paddle, touring paddle is feathered. Well, this is a good, a good thing here. The, uh, the drip rings, you can see the way I have my drip ring. So the way this it works for me, I used to have them up here near the paddle. That's wrong. Cause when I dip the paddle in, that would get wet. And when I pick it up, water would come up this thing. So I like mine above the water line where the paddle goes in. And it's a natural thing for me. It just goes that way. And I like it. The drip ring should be outside the width of the boat, right? The beam, isn't that the beam of the boat? It should be outside of that. So it drips outside the boat. Uh, you know, it's not rocket science, but uh, maybe it'll save you a wet leg. I could feather my paddles, but I'm too lazy. There's an adjustable paddle. I can adjust the length, which is pretty handy. After you're paddling a while, you may want to make an adjustment. A lot of people say that the paddle length is you know, based on your height. I find it's more based on the width of the boat. <laughs> you know, now, I tend to be somewhat of a vertical. Pull my paddle a little bit higher. I'm getting lowering it down for this trip. So the paddle's opened up a little bit more. It's a maximum extension here. So I'm always trying to stay on the deep side. You know, if you look at the angle of approach, a lot of times you can see one side, this camera's moving all over. One side's a little deeper than the other. You can see where the water is white capping on some rocks here. It's under the surface. Yeah, sometimes it's a free for all. You don't know what you're getting. I mean, it's pretty mild water. You know? You do pick up speed when you're in the downhills. There's a nice rock there. Whoops. I'm gonna go for the inside. Uh, that doesn't look possible. Uh-oh. Uh okay. Wanna watch out for that rock. Big guy right there. Okay, no problem. So, we're maneuvering the kayak, uh, you know, a sea kayak, like a touring kayak like this. It's pretty long, it's not, you know, it's not a river kayak. Uh, not meant for white water. So when you want to go lean left to go right, what you do is You can see the shape of the boat it Kind of bows out the sides bow out in the middle where I'm sitting. So you lean like this and You paddle off and that will cause you to go to one direction. You lean the other side lean right to go left so it's uh, lean to the opposite side and sometimes, you know, depending on the boat you're in and the conditions, you can just lean and the boat will just turn by itself. But I don't think this boat is going to do it. It makes it easier to turn. But, uh, you know, it's a good compromise boat for a folding boat. This one handles pretty well. There's a lot of fishermen out today and they're in these like dory type boats. Uh, by far in the Delaware, one of the most popular boats is uh, the canoe. Uh, you'll see a lot more of those. There's a lot of canoe rentals. Kayak is a good choice too. Today it's windy. Kayak has a little advantage in the wind. 
in that you sit lower in the water. Your butt's right on the water, and uh, you're down, less of a wind profile. And if you uh, go into a full tuck, you can get even less wind. Uh, so it's a good choice for what I'm doing. And of course, it's a deck boat, so if water washes over the deck, it won't flood. I didn't uh, bring the sea spray skirt. So I'm not expecting that kind of action here. I've got to think about a place to camp. It's uh, 20 after 4. I'd like to have a camp by around 6. Sunset at about 8 something. So uh, it'd be nice to be tucked away somewhere. I have to just find somewhere. So hauling a boat out on rocks like this, um, I've had the Hypalon skin and frame boats. And when you haul them out, you know, that frame has the Hypalon uh, rubberized fabric on the, on the bottom. And uh, you haul it out on this, it starts abrading on the places where the frame is. So if you're in a rocky area and you're landing on rocks, like one of the lakes I kayak at, um, you gotta be careful. You know, when you land, you gotta get out before you hit the rocks. Otherwise, you'll start to wear through on the places where the rubber is stretched over the frame. Those are wear points. Many times they're reinforced, but uh, you know, there's no perfect boat <laughs> and they have a problem. The inflatable boat wouldn't have been too good today. Too windy. You know, inflatable boats are great. Everybody loves them. I think they're good. Uh, I've had one, I've used it. Um, but uh, on a windy day like today, you get blown around. This one did really good in the wind and it, uh, didn't weathercock much. Uh, it, uh, it, it's just a great boat. It, you know, and there were some rough seas here, you know, quartering waves and uh, confused waters and stuff. This one just went right through it. I mean, just plowed right through. So it's, uh, you know, a kayak is as good as the person paddling it, and I'm no expert. So, uh, but this one's pretty easy to handle, pretty easy to use. It's all compromises, right? Folding kayak has a lot of compromises, but you can stick it under your bed. You can take it on a subway. It's uh, got some real advantages too. Good day of paddling. Uh, now I'm on an island and uh, here's the kayak. So, you know, it's a trade off, right? It's a folding kayak. You have to open up everything to get at everything. But once you open it, it's all easy. Now I've had regular sea kayaks with hatches and they're no better. You have to shove stuff in the back and reach in there and all. Uh, so, you know, I've got to repack everything tomorrow. I just took too much stuff. It's just too tight a squeeze. I brought too much clothing, uh, but uh, that's the way it goes. And uh, I think, you know, it's just a beautiful night. I'm gonna uh, sleep under the stars tonight. So I have a Tyvek ground pad cloth. I, I was gonna bring a space blanket, but I thought I would try this Tyvek ground cloth. I got the chair and I'm gonna get out some music and just kind of watch the stars tonight. I have some homemade apple cider, hard cider, and I'll probably have a glass of that. That'll certainly send me off to sleep. I paddled a while today. I started from 1.30 in the afternoons when I hit the water. My ride left me off and I uh, paddled till 6.30. It's a full day. It was more difficult to find a place to camp than I thought just because of uh, population density but after eight weeks stuck at home the lockdown it's uh it's kind of nice to be out in the fresh air again on an island on the delaware great bird action today lots of birds uh bald eagle uh lots of common mergansers males and females saw a beaver i'll have breakfast here tomorrow and uh and then i'll be on my way again What a morning. There was a lot of dew last night. I didn't put up a tent. I slept out under the stars. Uh, Tyvek ground cloth, which I made. That worked out okay. But boy, was there a lot of dew. Everything got wet. And uh, I had an outer bag over the uh, sleeping bag, but uh, everything still got wet. Uh, this bag is uh, has a water-resistant cover. So nothing penetrated it. The down didn't get wet, but the uh, the outer skin is a little uh, droplets of water on it.
Breakfast is uh, boiled eggs. Oh, what a gorgeous day. For a ground pad, this uh, Tyvek, I got it at a uh, building supply place. It's just the kind of stuff you find on the side of a house. And I got a really good deal on a big roll of it a couple of years ago. And uh, I just cut off a hunk, use it until it's not good anymore, which takes a long time. But I just use it as a ground pad. It can rip. Uh, now I reinforced the edges with uh, Tyvek tape and I put in grommets so I can stake this down if I'm in a windy condition. Uh, it is a good way, uh, ground pad. The, the ground here is a little damp and it uh, kept the water out. I just flipped it over to dry it, but uh, it worked good. I've been using it for a while. I use uh, smaller pieces of this Tyvek as a uh, doormat for a tent or as a placemat for eating dinner off of. And again, I reinforced the edges and I put on some loops and put a grommet in there so I could uh, stake it down if it's windy. You know, once you got a big piece of this stuff, you can cut it up and do whatever you want, you know? And for audio, I just brought a little uh, AM FM pocket radio and a uh, MP3 speaker just to get news and weather. No AM stations out here. And it's only one FM station. Playhouse is too much of a treasure and, uh, to lose. Radio's good, AM, FM, weather. Go to our website at fbplayhouse.org. It's always good to have a little news box along. So I put links for all this stuff in the bottom. I would like to sleep in there. And about three o'clock in the morning, I hear this. Like, what the heck is that? You know. <laughs> I'm in my sleeping bag, sleeping under the stars, and uh, you know, it's a beautiful night. And uh, what I realized is it was a deer. These deer make like a huffing sound, and uh, <laughs> I don't spook easily in the woods. I mean, I really, you know, there's not much here to worry about, and uh, it was just kind of funny. Uh, once I realized what it was, I had a great night's sleep after that. And they came around quite a bit. I don't know if I'm in their spot. I mean, I'm on an island. I don't know if they cross over from the uh, from the land and uh, you know spend time here. But uh, I heard them uh, a number of times. So. I'm leaving at the crack of noon here, pulling out over rocks, and they're rounded rocks. They're not real sharp. Ugh. using a paddle leash. One less thing to worry about. I seem to be going down the river backwards. Let's turn around. So again, to turn, you lean the boat over. Kind of helps it pivot. You don't have that longness, as much longness in the water. So I'll lean right to go left. lean it over quite far. You'd want to test this before you buy a kayak. I'd like to know how it handles. Okay. This boat uses a, a trapeze. It looks like a trapeze for a leg rest. So there's two straps that go straight down and there's a bar across it and you tighten these straps up. What you want is you want your knees up in the corners of the deck here kind of out that way out that way and uh that gives you pretty good control now i don't paddle that way all day long you know i change leg positions and loosen the trapeze and straighten my legs out or tighten it up uh in here is the uh the trapeze my feet are resting on it it's like a little pedal action there you know pedals are important when you're kayaking a foot rest uh, you can get more power that way. Uh, it's also more comfortable. You can rest your feet on there. Yeah. But that's, uh, if you're coming to some rough water, you'd want to do that. So you have better control and you can lean and tilt. It's also good to know where the tipping point is. Fool around with your boat in a lake or something and learn where the tipping point is so, <laughs> so you don't get yourself in trouble.
I find an adjustable paddle to be a good thing. Um, this one has markings. You can make sure it's perfectly straight or feathered, 45, you know, different has different angles on the uh, on here to show you where you're at. And uh, I like that, you know, sometimes I like to paddle out wider. Sometimes I like it in closer, depending on the water I'm paddling. Also, when you're out all day, it gives you a chance to change, you know, your stroke a little bit by, uh, by modifying the length of the paddle. You know, so you're not just doing the exact same stroke all the time. Uh, some people, you know, like their paddles more vertical. Some people like them out further. I like them out a little further. But uh, everybody's got their own preference. And, you know, it's, conditions may dictate what paddle length is best for you, too. So you kind of get it all in one when you have a uh, adjustable paddle. Now, these are touring paddles. And they're... Uh, somebody texted me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good cell coverage up and down his river. In some places there was nothing, <laughs> absolutely nothing. But uh, uh, other places uh, there was pretty good uh, cell phone coverage and uh, and texting coverage. No internet coverage. Uh, that was uh, just not going to work up here. So uh, not that that matters. But yeah, it's always fun to send photographs and stuff out from where I am. Last night I sent some photographs out. I was able to get text messages, but the photographs that I took at the phone, which are not high quality, they took a couple of hours to send like four of them. You know, I don't care. I just start it and go to sleep, you know, and it, uh, but in the morning they were all sent. But uh, it's uh, a little nice to be out of touch too. You can always turn it off, the phone. I think if you're an experienced uh, touring kayaker, you'd probably appreciate this boat and like it. Um, if you're forced into buying a uh, folding kayak, I think this would be just a great choice. I know I've been saying that a lot. Uh, I paid for this boat. My review of this is my own. I'm not beholden to the company. But uh, I do think that this is uh, a real, there's, there's no shortcomings. now. I've had it out in the ocean. The ocean's a different story, and uh, up in Bar Harbor. And uh, my view is, <laughs> if you take a boat out in the ocean and you come back alive, it's because you were lucky. <laughs> it has nothing to do with your skill. Your skill will help you survive, but <laughs> the ocean is uh, is stronger than you are as a kayaker. If you don't believe me, read that book, Deep Trouble. According to the GPS, when I paddle, I'm doing about three miles an hour, and it's easy. It's an easy pace for me to maintain, so it's a uh, good cruising speed. I can go faster than that, but it's more work. So the GPS I'm using is a. Uh, here, let me get that out. It's a Garmin 64 ST. Now my phone, you know, has GPS in it, also Google Maps, and I download the maps for that. But this is pretty durable. I like to have two systems, you know redundancy and you know I, I'm not gonna get lost on here it's more for uh, tracking where I'm going and how far I'm going and all that so it's, uh, it's a good uh, thing I put extra memory in it I don't know why I did though and I bought maps for it for US and Canada and it's good you got to learn how to use it it's not as easy as Google Maps you got to fool around with this thing quite a bit but uh, I did that and now I know how to use it and I'm happy well, this is the uh, third day, two days on the, three days on the river, and uh, two nights out uh, kayak camping. And I'd have to say that this boat is just great. It's really good for what I'm doing with it. Um, again, it's a compromise. You know, if you need a folding kayak, I think it's a great choice. Um, 16 feet long. It cruises really well. I was able to make good time. It's a faster kayak than some of these shorter ones. Maybe not the fastest kayak, but it held all my stuff. Uh, last night, I uh, camped here, put the tent up, took a chance to see if it would work uh, without the fly, but I still got a little wet. Next time, I'll put the fly on, too. It's just such a nice night. I wanted to look at the stars. And like any piece of gear, there's a certain adjustment you have to go through. You have to get used to opening and closing the, uh, the body to, uh, to put your stuff in and out. It takes a little planning. Not hard. I mean, it's like that with a regular kayak too. You just put everything in through the nose and the uh, and the behind the seat. You got to push it all in, but getting it out is not that easy. Often uh, held all my gear. I brought uh, food, clothing, 
tent, uh, biv bag, sleeping bag, uh, a bunch of stuff. I did hit a few rocks coming down the river. Uh, the rocks here are mostly rounded from what I could see. I could feel a kayak hit him and just, you know, night were not hard impacts, but no, no problem whatsoever. It seemed like it didn't even, you know, <laughs> affect it at all. Uh, I'm not reckon, uh, recommending you go out and, you know, slam into rocks and stuff. It was fairly comfortable to paddle. Um, I've had a lot of kayaks, like I say, and this one is uh, uh, more to the comfortable side. I had plenty of leg room, plenty of uh, butt cushion. It's a rocky river, and I bumped into a few rocks, not a lot. And looking at the hull, it looks in good shape. These deep creases are the ones, these lines over here, these are all folds from uh, the construction of the kayak. Uh, there's a couple of scuff marks here. I'm running my fingernail on them. They're barely, you know, scratch the surface. Uh, you can feel them with your fingernail, but that's about all, not with your finger. So, overall, launching a boat filled, you know, with uh, maybe 50 pounds of gear, some water, maybe 60 pounds of stuff, and me, I weigh 160, so that's 220 pounds of load in here. And, uh, hauling it in and out sometimes i hauled out on rocks sometimes like this on mud and uh it held up pretty well i expect to get a lot more trips out of this boat and uh i'm pretty happy with it you know i, I think it's a good boat for what i'm doing if you have to make the compromise of a folding boat this is a great choice for some people a folding kayak is the only thing that they can use or an inflatable in my opinion this beats an inflatable hands down and i know because i've owned them <laughs> uh, you know, they're coming out with new stuff all the time. I acknowledge that. You know, there may be better inflatables uh, now. Skin and frame, I think this beats that. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, great boat. Nice fishing. <laughs> 